It's Vlogmas Day 14! Broken oh. Ooh. Oh. I think this is now two or five. Nobody else is happy about that. I'm writing Christmas cards and I forgot how many Clarks we have in our family because Mark's grandparents are Clarks, my grandparents were Clarks, we're not related. Um, I hope we're not related. We're not related. And uh, so every, pretty much every card is Mrs. Clark, Mr. and Mrs. Clark, Mr. and Mrs. Clark. Mr. and Mrs. Clark. And this is why Mark's not allowed to do the Christmas cards anymore. Because one year he did them and he didn't write the address on, he just basically wrote Mr. and Mrs. Clark on the outside, but wrote their names on the inside of the card and sealed them. So, yeah, that was fun. Remember that, Mark? Mark's ignoring me. Arthur's being cute. Okay, he's not now. <laughs> that was terrible. And Mark has his, uh, Mark, what shawl are you wearing? It's my big shawl. Let's show it off to the world. It's a uh, Woolen Flowers Big Star. Oh, God, it's too dark in here. Um, yeah. It's the sofa shawl. Yeah, magnificent. Do twirl? No. Oh. Yeah, we're just having a chill Saturday because Mark said a really... I'm very zoomed in. That's a lot of my face. Woo! Mark said a busy week at work and I'm just lazy. Did I show you that I did my wall? Although one of them fell off. Uh, it's not too many of them. No. So yeah, so we need more art for here, here, here here and here. These all need art, um, but that's fine. And some of them need like mounts put on properly, like this one, this one. Yeah, so beautiful. Right, I've just finished my Christmas cards, um, but I got post from my friend Morag today. And so she recently went to Disneyland Paris, well jealous. And she sent me <laughs> a little pin badge and it says, Dear LJ, please enjoy this gift from Disneyland Paris. I sold the kidney to buy it, even though it was small. Disney flair is a rich man's game, Mo. <laughs> I quite believe Disney merch is expensive. But this is the pin badge she got me. So it's the dog and the wee kid from Up. I don't know their names. Oh. Russ and Doug. <laughs> it's so cute and it's got like a Mickey pin bag. So I'm going to put it on my pin bag that's covered in paint from when, oh my lord, uh, from when I spilled all the paint out of the car in Tesco's. I bought new paint to paint the shop thinking I wouldn't have enough, had enough, was going to return the tin of new paint but it fell out of the car in the Tesco's car park, all down the car, all over me, all over my back. I will insert a photo here. Um, some lovely guy helped us from Tesco's. Um, yeah, oh jeez. So. Oh. Oh my god, they've got like a number and everything. Oh. So I'm not sure where I'm going to put them on my bag because it's it's quite full. Um, this is the bag I bought um, for going on my honeymoon because it's smaller than a backpack but bigger than a handbag and it could go in my bag. And I've slowly been covering it in pins. I didn't have this many when I went. But we're running out of room because um, he's a big tronky boy. Maybe I can move some of the smaller ones. So basically, this is called an Ita bag. It's inspired by um, Japanese bags where you're meant to get a bag and like clart it in 
merch from like your favourite character or band or band member. Hey Sozzy. Um, so it's got this clear pocket front um, and it means you don't lose your pin badges although some of mine still keep wanting to fall off and I've just gotten a bit of card covered in felt and pinned it through so I'm gonna move you guys can't see this I really this is one of my more recent ones from a bear in sheep's clothing um from Perth Yarn Festival he's lifting his kilt up and I really like this one this one's from catnip illustrations I've got some Totoro that's Hayao Miyazaki uh Ponyo no face <laughs> You can sloth my KV one. They're all just so cute. So I'm gonna move. You're in a cult. Call your dad. <laughs> that was from Golding's Yarn Club. Hey. I'll come back to you once this is done. There we go. And there he is. Yes, I have a penis pin. And Hannah's uh, skein's on and Bob's back on there. So yeah, I just need to clean this for tomorrow for going, because tomorrow we're going to the urban market and that'll be the most Christmassy thing we've done since putting up the Christmas tree. Um, yes, so peace. Right, so I'm gonna put pockets in that red dress. So I have this um, side seam pocket shape that I use for everything. I'm going to cut four out of these and then I will show you what I do next. So, in Scotland, I am bruising institution. They recently changed the recipe and we're no happy. However, for Christmas, there's some crimble juice that's what, fiery ginger? Spiced ginger. And Mark bought some, so. I don't know. It's like the spiced flavour cancels out the iron brew flavour and the iron brew flavour cancels out the spiced flavour. Mm, it tastes of anything. Mm. Have you tried it? No. Try it. Do you want some of mine? Oh no, you've got ill. Mm. It tastes like anything. Like it's just sweet. So the next thing you've got to do is locate where you want your packets. So <clears throat> my God, duh. God, duh. So there's a zip in the side of this. So probably just under the zip. Well, that's quite low. gonna have to be though isn't it? Does that sit? Should have marked it. Best advice is to mark it when you've tried it on. Mm, no it could be okay. Yeah I'm gonna put them in there. So you want to unpick your seam where you're gonna put your pockets in. Oh how perfect because we are effectively doing stuff with fabric right now. Also weirdly a lot of questions about what can you do with cabbage so I guess we're doing all of the things right now. So one of the questions that I get very, very frequently is, are there any good resources for historically accurate materials for natural uh, materials no. or where to find them <laughs> online? However, I must point out that I am not a good resource for providing online fabric. Once you've got your holes, <laughs> you want to pin them in with the droopy bit facing down. So, droopy bit facing the bottom and you want to pin right side to right side but tuck it in and you're basically just gonna stitch um slightly inside see where your 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 old seam was 
you want to stitch closer to the raw edge. I'll probably put a zigzag on this to hold it. So let's just do that. Okay, so you should just say I've used, used scrap fabric because I'm going to be dyeing this so and also you won't see it. So now that you've got your bits stitched in, you're going to take them out and pin, pin, thank you, pin them together and instead of sewing your seam back in a straight line, you're going to go up to the pocket and instead of going along the pocket, you're going to come your seam allowance in, you can't see me pointing on this side can you, you're going to go up there, seam allowance in and you're going to go round all your pocket and then up to, as I'd go over where you opened um, just to make sure it's secure um, and that's pretty much it. You can then top stitch down on the inside like you could, would that be easier to do that just now? No, I would do that last. But yeah, you could easily press that down and top stitch it so that it's not going to come out too much. Um, I will decide on that later. Okay, so this is what I've got. We've got a floppy little dude. Um, we'll turn him inside out. Before we do that, I would snip some of the corners, like the rounded bits. So you can just put a single snip. Don't snip through your stitches. And this just allows the fabric to have more room when it's turned out. Um, I don't suppose it's really necessary for pockets. Sometimes you snip a V out, but for pockets I just do a, a little bit. We'll do the same on the other side. This battery's gonna die, so hang on. And here we go. Yeah. We've got some um, inseam pockets. They might be a bit low. They are quite low, <laughs> but that's because of the zip, so they'll probably be different once it's on. I just feel better when I have pockets. <laughs> okay, job done. This is going to be dyed tomorrow.